This is TK Coleman, and you're listening to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about the art of celebrating the right people and getting away from the wrong ones and why that means everything for making your life the way you want it to be. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. The inability to be enthusiastic about other people's success is poison to the soul. Now, on the surface, this might sound like I am espousing some cheesy philosophy that says you should be pretentiously excited and just flip out and go, oh, my God, every time something good happens to another person. But that is not what this is about. This is really about you and how the way in which you react to other people's victories will affect you. So I want you to look at this through the lens of self-interest. If you are unable to celebrate the successes that happen in other people's life, you will be limited in your ability to cultivate the successes that can happen in your own. When good things happen to other people and you look at that and you find yourself thinking things like, oh, she doesn't deserve that. I can't stand him. He should have never gotten that. I should be the one with that opportunity. Even if you are right, you will compromise the creative energy and the focus that is necessary to direct on your own dreams. On the other hand, if you can develop a celebratory attitude towards other people's successes, it makes it easier for you to learn from them. You see, it's very difficult to learn from people when you're bitter at them or when you're jealous of them. But when you're celebratory, it makes it easier to be curious. If I see something good happen to you, you got the job that I wanted, you got the gig that I wanted, I say, man, good job, brother. I'm so excited for you, man. Hey, what did you do to put yourself in a position to make that happen? Tell me a little bit about how your process unfolded. I would love to learn from you. And you know, people love to talk about the process behind their successes. And if you approach them with the spirit of genuine curiosity, they will tell you things that you can then incorporate into your own process. So when good things happen to other people, develop the habit of celebrating it. One of the most difficult things to do in life is recognize evidence of progress. And if you lack the ability to recognize evidence of progress, it will make it harder for you to continue to stay motivated, to continue to invest in the things that matter. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're in the car and you're traveling from Chicago to L.A. You start in Chicago. You're heading towards L.A. For the overwhelming majority of the trip, you are going to be somewhere other than L.A. So on day one, you're not yet in L.A. After you've traveled 200 miles, you're not yet in L.A. After traveling a thousand miles, you're still not yet in LA. And if you only think about this trip in terms of I'm not in LA yet, you're going to feel pretty discouraged and you're going to quit and you're going to give up. But people don't typically do that when they take road trips. And why is that? It's because people have learned how to measure progress. After a thousand miles, you say, I'm not yet in LA, but I'm also not where I was yesterday. I'm not yet in my desired destination but I'm also a long way from Chicago. I'm a long way from my starting point, right? And so the ability to measure progress, even if you're not at your desired destination, even if you're not experiencing your ideal, is the thing that keeps you motivated. And when it comes to our own lives, it can be so difficult to recognize how we're improving because we tend to judge ourselves by the fact that we are not yet where we want to be. And so you're striving so hard, you're studying so hard, you're working so hard to make all these improvements in your life. And sometimes it feels like you're not progressing. One of the best ways to practice your ability to recognize progress is by looking at other people's success. Looking at that, celebrating that, getting curious about that, and then that ability will transfer into your own life and you'll have an improved capacity to see how you also are progressing as a result of the investments you make in your personal growth. That's why you want to be enthusiastic about other people's success. It's not about being cheesy. It's about putting yourself in a position to live as freely and fully as possible. And why would you not want to do that? Let's go to tweet number two. If I spent all my time around people who did nothing more than roll their eyes at me, mock everything I say, laugh at my dreams, and shoot down all my suggestions, I'd feel unworthy too. You might have a case of imposter syndrome, 
but you might just need to have some new friends. You might just need to get some new friends. So there's a lot of talk about imposter syndrome, and I think this talk is very good. I actually made a video on imposter syndrome that I think you should check out. It's the sense of being a fraud that's eventually going to be found out. You're not worthy of the task at hand. You're not worthy of the things that you want in life. And sometimes we we have that going on and there are ways that we can we can sort of overcome our imposter syndrome, but oftentimes what gets labeled as imposter syndrome is really nothing more than an unhealthy social life that makes it psychologically impossible for you to take your dreams seriously. People surround themselves with people that don't respect them, don't honor them, don't value being around them, crap on everything that they have to say, tease them, laugh at them, mock them all the time, and then they expect to live healthy lives? My friends, that's not possible. If you want to live a better life individually, then you've got to start by recreating your life socially. You don't owe it to anyone to be their friend just because you went to high school with them, just because you've known them for X amount of years, just because they follow you on Twitter or Facebook, or just because your mom knows their mom, just because you live in the same neighborhood, just because your neighbor's in the apartment complex or whatever it may be that you live in. You don't owe your friendship to anybody. And you definitely, definitely don't owe it to people who make you feel like crap by being in their presence. It's one thing to be around people who challenge you for the purpose of making you better. It's one thing to be around people who will give you harsh feedback and constructive criticism that you can use to make yourself more valuable in your craft. But it's another thing to be around people who try to make you feel small in order to compensate for the fact that they don't have anything going on in their own lives or people who try to make you feel small just because that's how they get their kicks in life. Don't waste your time around those people. You have to get some new friends. You know, in order to do this, you got to take the risk of being alone. And a lot of people stay in unhealthy relationships because they never want to be alone. And here's the advice I would give to you about that. It is better to be epic in your aloneness than to be lonely in the company of many people. You see, being alone can be tough sometimes, but I really think aloneness is a gift because it's an opportunity for you to get to know your own preferences, your own principles, your own priorities in the absence of social influence. But even if being alone is really, really difficult for you, you gotta understand that loneliness is not the product of having a bunch of people around you or no people around you. Loneliness is the product of having your dignity go unaffirmed. And if you are around a bunch of people who don't affirm your dignity, who don't respect you, you'll still feel lonely even though you're in the midst of a crowd. So take the risk of being alone because when you take that risk of being alone, you'll get to know yourself, you'll get to respect yourself, and you'll begin to see the way forward, how you can make investments in the life that you want to have. And you'll begin to develop a greater confidence in your dreams and your visions and your preferences and you will inevitably attract the kind of people into your life who will organically intersect with your values. But stop wasting your time around people who are small enough to make investments in making you feel small. Hey, that's TK's two cents on celebrating the right people and get away from the wrong ones. When you see somebody doing something well, get excited about it, get curious about it, see how you can learn from it so you can make yourself better. And when you see somebody treating you like crap, put an end to it quickly, demand respect by walking away from the people that refuse to give it. That is all. Thanks for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to share your additional thoughts or your experiences. Be sure to let me know if there are any topics you'd like to hear me talk about in the future. And don't hesitate to share this with a family member and a friend. And hit that subscribe button, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.